with one. Oh, so now it'll be like a plus two if you have to make a saving throw. Yeah, it's like the. I think the total I have for my deck save right now is plus four. My charisma is plus eleven. Plus eleven charisma, plus eight wisdom, plus six intelligence, plus seven constitution, plus eight strength. All right, here we go. So, um, Krun, um, you agree to go with this alchemist, um, this other paladin, and this new hire to go and investigate this mysterious door that they discuss. As you kind of enter into Haverhill Mine, um, as though you have no problem seeing, uh, neither do you. Um, every single one of you has dark vision, I believe. Um, Haha, yeah. no torch crew. Perfect. Um, so you guys descend down into the Haverhill mine. Um, see, make me a uh, intelligence check. Since it has been some time since you've been down here. That's true. Let's do it. You spend a good hour, maybe two hours, trying to remember exactly where you went um, to find that door. And this leads you in all different types of directions, um, places that you recall. Um, you end up coming to a point where there's a dead end and a stone slab of a door. Um, you know this isn't the door, um, but it has like a silver or a, a flat centered disc in its center. Um, this is that strange arcane door that um, you couldn't uh, go through, and there has to be some sort of magic pattern to pass through. Uh, Typhon puts the pocket symbol on it. Uh, go ahead and um, make an intelligence check for you. Uh, I've remembered it before. I've used it. No, I know. Times. I'm asking if you'd okay. remember it. Okay. It's been a while uh, since a, the, the Mylon a, situation. Is it a saving throw or just a straight check? Just an intelligence check. Okay. Okay. So you would be able to open this door, but you would also remember that this door actually just leads into um, uh, Lavastine Manor, which is emptied, if you oh, recall. Oh, okay. Yep, it goes into the basement, and you can see that it leads up to another regular door. He the door, and he says, Anybody home? Doesn't seem that there's anybody present. Good. Um, That's how I like it. Come back on your wanderings into the uh, the mines, and eventually you find it. Um, a large, um, empty, cavernous room. Um, on the opposite side, there appears to be a stone uh, dais that kind of ascends up to a golden door. And in the center of the door is a strange orb-like slot, um, a place where you would be able to fit some sort of orb. Strange markings cover the entirety of the door. Um, the main marking on the door is what appears to be a six-armed woman with four faces. Each of her um, hands is holding a sword, a curved blade, um, and it seems that she is lopping the heads off of a six-headed serpent. Um, I recognize this, right? Yeah, um, was Typhon didn't go into Haverhill Mine, did he? Was he one of the people who actually found the store, or was it just Aslo? Uh, um, he, he, he didn't go into the mines, but um, okay. that's Varhuin, right? So the woman that's being shown uh, appears to be the fair woman, um, or the Whithaven. So no, uh, nothing that you would recognize. Actually, um, Fenmar, go ahead and roll me an intelligence check. Um, you can add uh, Arcana, Nature, or Religion if you have any of those. Okay. Um, the symbol definitely looks like something you've seen in the Feywild. Um, something that the uh, Eladrin may have had patterning on some of their, their buildings um, in your world, um, your former world on your past and uh you're not terribly sure why it's here uh, in a in a cave no less caves aren't particularly well some caves but this cave just seems really just kind of bland and blah um andy uh kren would be kind of feeling this very strange kind of sense from the door um 
specifically you, um, you, you feel this very strange kind of sense from the door that kind of is keying towards your more base emotions. Um, it feels like something on the other side um, has kind of a malice to it. Oh, come on. It's not evil. It's hateful. And because of the type of hateful, yeah, because of the type of paladin that you are, you kind of have like a almost a sympathetic nature to it. Vengeance, six vengeance. Oh, what the? All right. So, what do you do with the door, friendos? I approach the door, and I take the orb of Gavilus out from underneath my robes, and I look at it, and I <laughs> grimace at it. And then I push it into the well, circle. As you kind of lift it up to kind of do so, it kind of leaves your hand and almost like a magnet. Uh, it kind of flies into the slot against your will if you try to resist it. Oh, uh, no. That was my yeah. intent. Yep. Slams into place. Um, the second it does, you can kind of see just the material of the door, which appears to be gold, kind of like slipping um, apart not cracking um, and not melting, um, just kind of dematerializing, becoming particleized. Um, and as it's doing so, um, as they'll go ahead and make me a dexterity saving throw. Am I within 10 feet of Chad? Uh, yes. All right, so it'll be this plus uh, additional three. So 19. Okay. Um, as you kind of stand there and watch, the orb kind of just starts floating towards you and the ground beneath you starts to rumble. You kind of grab the orb and back away. Um, and as you back away, the entirety of the ground beneath you turns into like a cavalcade of spikes, just spiking out um, in that single spot. Had you remained standing there, um, you're pretty certain that um, you would have been impaled um, every which way. Um, Shortly after the door fades away, the spikes kind of rescind back into the ground um, with a strange fluidity for stone. Um, and this leaves the uh, entrance beyond uh, open before you. It appears that it is a hall, um, some 10 feet wide, uh, some 10 feet high, that just continues on into the darkness. Um, you would kind of notice that it has a downward gradient, um, so it's not just straight in. It seems to be kind of sloping downwards, but not like a straight slope. Um, you couldn't throw water down it and slip and slide all the way down. It's just kind of a slow ride down. Our path is clear, gentlemen. How about you paragons of virtue? As you kind of... Yeah, Typhoon. In. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, oh, no, Typhoon was just going to, you know, be standing by pretty much right next to where those spikes came out, but helping everybody get through the door in case that shit happened again. Okay. Um, you guys kind of enter in, and you would see that there are markings all along the walls, um, and every 10 feet there seems to be as you kind of inspect all of these symbols, Want a religion check from the paladins, a um, arcana check from the others. What about I now have access to character sheets, senor? Oh shit! Hold on a second. A Mexican speaking half orc should be. Senor, I order a body rose. I like. Delivering justice and doing lines of cocaine. Okay. You should be able to access the character sheet now, not just see it. Is that correct? Oh. Go ahead and click that religion for me. And uh, Chad, do likewise. Yeah. What the? Okay. That's. I feel like my skills are. So I get my proficiency bonus. Yeah, I have like a plus eight in athletics, but it should be a plus six. I don't care about that. Roll a religion check. 
Sorry, broken character sheets freak me out. It's fine. Um, none of you are really picking up on these strange symbols, but there seems to be a sequence of four patterns above you, and then the ones on the walls seem to be kind of like some sort of storytelling, um, and there does appear to be a language. Um, as though, were you one of the ones that gained Basriel as a language? Yeah, we, we talked to the uh, yep. like crow guy. The, the Brock. Yep. The, yeah. Okay, so you would recognize this as the writings of the Vazrael, and it seems that it's telling kind of a, a story. Uh, the story that's being told seems to be a story of triumph of a Vazrael people known as the Svenin um, and their defeat over people known as the Derlithothi. I'm going to go ahead and type those out. Uh, most of the doodles that you see are people versus people on the low ends. I guess the best way to kind of understand like the bas relief stylings of the uh, the walls is think of uh, Alduin's wall from Skyrim. It's kind of like embossed out and um, very you know detailed and with kind of an organic flow. But the lower portion appears to be humans versus humans, and every so often you'll see um, a picture. Um, a piece of a six-headed serpent biting off the eyes of what appears to be a beholder. Um, very gruesome detail. Um, at the very end of this matter, as you kind of come to a point where it seems that the place will open up out of a hall, um, the last thing... a dragon and then the very last uh pattern which is on both sides of the wall on, on either side of you on either wall um is a six-armed woman with six curved blades cutting off the heads of the uh six-headed serpent you would notice uh as though kind of a bit keen-eyed on this um that uh, one of the heads is not getting cut off it seems to be kind of ducking beneath the blade oh so one survived. Um, I'll briefly, I brief, I'll briefly narrate what as we walk along the wall and kind of like are looking at. I'll very briefly narrate what is happening here. Who won in, in this depiction? The, the Svenson people or the Derlithothians? Derlithothians were defeated by the Svenin, and then it looks like this dragon people, which are known as the Ashmedians, are defeating the. Um, Ashmedians are defeating the uh, uh, Svenin, and at the very end, it looks like this um, uh, symbol of elven kind, this fair woman, is defeating them as well. Yeah, I briefly relay that. These guys are yeah. fighting, and then the elves came in. And... and you're really focused on the tale you're telling, um, so much so that you don't see what everybody else sees, um, which kind of brings their eyes up to the matter at hand. Um, it looks like you've exited the stone, my friends. Um, from what you can see, it looks like this, there's a sky above you um, and a path in the rocks that leads out. Um, but it doesn't appear that the there's much um, to the sides of the paths. And it looks like it actually falls into oblivion on the sides of the paths. The sky is purplish pink with starlight shining everywhere and the path seems to wind and lead to a very strange shrine i'm trying to find my doodle but for some reason hold on we're in the twisting nether sure sure why not or the the void quote unquote oh my god what why is my proficiency bonus plus five So do you see a picture in front of you guys? Yep. Yep. Okay. So everything beyond that, like everything on the outside of that, is just pink and purple, like nebulous kind of colors with shining stars all about you. 
um, and everything beneath this as well appears to be the same. There's like small little black figures that look like they're kind of walking on the steps. That's just for reference. That's not for, um, there's not really people there. So does this feel similar to what happened in the Lavastine Manor? Uh, correct. In hmm. fact, um, well, you're pretty certain that you you don't feel a change. Uh, whatever change there was seems to have been more subtle than the Lavastine change. But I suspect it's the same. Correct. All right. I walk up next to Ezlo and I say, be on your guard. I've seen this kind of thing before. Get the flesh thief. Well, in that case, uh, so we're looking at this temple, right? Like we're, this is our front view. This is this picture? <laughs> yeah. So you're basically standing at the foot, uh, at the very base of the picture, looking out. Are those scrawlings Vazriel? Like, are they familiar or is it just like mumbo jumbo? They appear to be arcane. Um, they are that. Or writing. Oh, okay. Any questions? Cool, because this is some pretty weird shit to be brought into on your first day. I like, didn't see. Anything. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> you didn't see the handout? No, it didn't pop up. Then I got some like weird error message on roll twenty, so I'm just reloading it. Okay. Yeah, I see like the shrine looking. Yeah. Beast. I can post it on Discord. Shit fucking tilts me sometimes, dude. Roll 20. God damn. Uh, every other Canadian. What? It just hates every other Canadian. No, Roll 20 sometimes just freezes on me, too. There was times when I just... It was completely... Frozen. I don't think it's very well optimized. Like, yeah, I got got a new computer and it's like very balling out of control and it still rapes my CPU. Like, rapes it. Sometimes sometimes it behaves and sometimes it doesn't. I really don't understand why it messes with you guys because it's loading a bunch of stuff for the DM. It shouldn't be loading all that stuff for the players. It should only be loading what I show you. That's that's like Andy was saying. It's probably just the optimization. Like, all that code is probably going through every single user. Yeah. It's like, it's like when a... DM. It's like when a new game is released and they say it's not very well optimized. Like, you can have the most ball computer, but if it's not optimized, you're going to get, like, 30 FPS. Right. Yeah. It's your Gosu shaders are going to be trying to make sense of their idiot bullshit. Right. Because it doesn't know. It doesn't understand. Um, but yeah, that's what you see, um, kind of a strange Henji looking thing up on a summit, um, some distance away, uh, along a path it does appear kind of the foot of the summit. There is a strange door kind of carved into the stone. Um, and it does appear that there are lanterns kind of placed alongside the path, um, all along the way. Uh, Typhon takes a rock out of his pocket and kind of walks up to the edge of the walkway and looks over the edge and then just sort of tosses the rock off. Okay. You see it fall. How long do you wait? I mean, until I can't see it anymore, but it's like a pebble, so it's not it's not very long. Okay. You wait. Yeah, you can't see it anymore. He uh, turns around and he says, don't fall you, off. As you turn around, you hear a ting. And you turn around and you look and a pebble has hit the ground behind you. Whoa, <laughs> so we could fall off. Bum, bum, bum. I think there's trying to see what happens. <laughs> no. All right, let's uh, let's approach this here, this temple. Uh, as a, draws his sword and takes the lead. As a, if you want, you can go ahead and make an arcana check to try and figure out where you might be. Hmm. We're. I'm going to give you advantage for this, um, just because um, planar like knowledge. The, I was going to say, is this where like the dimension where my buddy came from, or something? <laughs> no, but this is where all such creatures will have to go through to get to this place. The far plane exists outside of the material plane. Um, it exists outside of what is known as the astral sea, and out of character to us, the astral sea would be like space. 
um, in D and D land, the astral sea is like that nebulous kind of plane that exists in between the planes and all outside of the planes. It's kind of like the alternate. It's like the the exact opposite of the ethereal. It is kind of everything. The astral plane is the heavens. Um, it appears that you are in the astral plane at some point in it. How high are we? So high. Yeah, welcome to my world. Yeah. I've been whispers of prayer. Who are you? If I'm within your shot, I'm gonna put my tell Typhon. Your gods can't hear you here. We rely only on our own wits. You guys continue walking yeah, up the friend. path. As Ivan thumps his chest and he says, "Very use with me." And who are the first? Who's the first person to walk past? Uh, walk first is, is Typhon up front, right? Yeah, totally so, looking for danger. The second you walk past those lanterns, the lanterns flare and they flare with a red light. I use divine sense. Okay. Um, the entirety of the place seems to glow um, with just pure blinding light. Um, you would expect this kind of thing from a celestial, um, and it seems to be causing you a bit of a headache. It seems that the entirety of the plane is celestial. Yep, he grabs his holy symbol and kind of says a prayer to try and help relieve some of that, that pain. <laughs> You would also note that the place seems to be consecrated um, as per the hollow spell, but you assume from a higher power. His weapons, like he doesn't feel that he's in as much danger right now. Okay. You continue along the path. Um, as you pass by um, the lanterns, uh, Krun, uh, the lights kind of glow a uh, like a, a jade green. Um, as though as they, you pass by it, they kind of glow a dark black. Um, and uh, they glow Wait, bright they're green. green. And then when I pass them, they change colors. As so what? Yeah. Something so, to my specific presence. Correct. Um, Exactly right. So when Chad passed by, they were bright red. When you passed by, they were kind of like a jade green. When Ezlo passed by them, it, they go solid black, like black lights. And um, when Kevin's character passes by them, they turn kind of a bright, vibrant uh, green. Uh, uh, oh, the wilding. Okay. Or the shifter. Wilding. He's, a, he's a wilding. Oh, wilding. Oh. Let's oh. Not just juggle race around like that. Yeah, that's a, little, that's a little harsh, bro, coming from a tiefling. Just I guess saying. you could say I'm, I guess you could say I'm also part dragon. No, I couldn't say that. Um, we, so, uh, anywho, um, the, the lights seem to be kind of reacting to you, um, and Andy, as you noticed. Um, your main thought on that is that they seem to be kind of emitting kind of the person's, like, aura. Like their their soul's aura as you pass by them. Damn, I'm edgy as fuck. Yeah, damn. I'm apparently not yet holy enough. Um, this would definitely cause you to think about Ezlo for a second, but because his did shine black. Yeah, but my divine sense didn't reveal anything about Ezlo. Correct. He is not a fiend, undead, or celestial. Like when you say black, is it like that? Uh... That, like Alta Black, like Black Veil Brides. <laughs> have you, black have it's you ever played Chemical Romance Black? Have you ever played Kingdom Hearts? Yeah. So like it's like the those guys. It's like that kind of dark. It's it's like Disneyland. Yeah. Do you continue? Also, oh, yeah. To slightly interrupt here, are we supposed to be seeing a map right now? No, not at all. It should be theater. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not really, so I was just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your tokens are up at the top if we get into anything that's going to be done in an initiative order, but for now, it's just, yeah. Damn, who's the bro with the fucking 24-pack on his chest? Uh, <laughs> that's Typhon. <laughs> that's, I didn't draw that one. That was Chad. 
<laughs> 24 pack. It's just armor, bro. It's just armor. Yeah, okay. All right, I'll press dude. Like, why are we even walking? Why are we just having punched on the walls? <laughs> yeah. He just like, it just starts like chucking everybody to the top. Just grabs the stairs and starts dragging them in toward you. Yeah, I'll get that shrine over to us. Hold on a second. <sighs> nice. Um, but anywho, um, you guys continue walking. With each lantern that you pass, the uh, lights do glow in the same fashion. Um, eventually, you get to the door. Um, just at the base of the summit there. Um, it would appear that there's some symbols, iconography kind of cut into the top. Um, it looks like uh, the best way to describe it is kind of a strange sun. Um, but closer examination, you see that it has six kind of bolts kind of spiraling out from it. And each of those seems to have, uh, a each of those um, seems to have kind of like a serpent's head. Uh, the writing is all in Vazrael. Um but from what you can tell, um, Eslo, it seems to be literal gibberish. So it looks like someone took a bunch of letters and just kind of threw them at the wall. Oh, God, it's Laura Mipsum. It's... This isn't a door, it's Sorry. a refrigerator. Sorry, that, that, was, a, that was a creative... Uh, Thank you. That was a... A little design and image joke. I think only no, Kevin probably picked up on that. Get off the stage. I got it. It's the work of lazy web designers. I know where we are. <laughs> are you are you saying that I'm greeking, bro? Get out of here. I don't want your shit. I'm not lazy. It's, it's got a point. It's there. It's real. I don't this is lazy. That's all. I mean, yeah. Not my. I didn't do it though. They, the fast real people did it. Nah. <laughs> so, do you want to try and mess with this door, or do you want to continue up the steps to the summit? I'd like to see the the summit, but uh, I'll go see what everyone else thinks. Totally spooked about this whole area. Yeah, I'd like to meet Summit One G and D and D. Okay. So to the summit then. Sounds like the majority of you guys are saying um, at the summit. You see um, that you are in basically on a flat surface, um, surrounded by starlight. Uh, above you are four large stones, uh, two of which seem to have just two of the larger pillars kind of anchoring it. And this fourth pillar seems to be kind of fallen away or is only one stone instead of the two set on top of each other. Each of these stones has strange markings about them. Um, they look like they're Vazriel sigils, uh, very old magic. And as well, you can feel that old magic kind of present here. It seems to be laying on top of you, hovering over you like a tremendous weight. Does uh, it feel volatile or just like have you ever, you know, have you ever had that feeling when you look up at the sky and you feel like you can see for a good longer distance than you thought you could, and you kind of just look up there for a while and are kind of confused? Maybe no, when you're, I don't have elven eyes. What? No, in in real life, do you ever look at the stars and think you can make oh, out more I'm detail? Saying. Like just in real life, like oh, so it's like laying, it's like gazing into like a, the Milky Way, and you're just like, whoa! It seems I'm like so you're insignificant. <laughs> You were looking at it off to the sides, and it was like, you know, okay. But now that you're looking at it up through this 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 iris of stone, you kind of have this strange feeling, like it's magnified, like it's you're you're looking at it, and it's clearer. Is the best way to describe it. You're focusing on it. This is a place of great power. We should tread carefully and give it its due respect. Okay. Um, as you kind of all mosey around, kind of looking, you know, around, uh, the stone ahead of you, the one that's not a pillar, um, it has a sigil kind of set um, at its high point that kind of has like um, a strange kind of look to it, almost like um, a circle with like a line descending south of it. It glows. Um, and when it does, it kind of glows a kind of uh, bright green color. Hmm. Typhon looks at the uh, the half orc in the uh, color to the half orc's flames or the other guy's flames. Bright green. Yeah, mine were like jadeish. Yeah, I'd say the bright green would be the wild in. 
Yeah, I'll look towards uh, Fenmar and be like, it calls to you. Oh boy, oh, oh, oh Jesus. I'm a brand new guy, and you guys are getting me into all this wild, crazy shit. Fenmar is spooked. It's a, hell of a, Thunderdome, bitch. it's a hell of a first day on the job. What do you do? What is this thing that's calling to me? It's a stone. Um, it looks like kind of a monolithic stone. It's probably about 30 feet high, 25 feet high, and this bright sigil that was when you came up to it, kind of a reddish color um, in the stone, is now glowing bright green. Um, I touch it. I go put my, my barky hands on that bitch. Okay. As you touch the stone, um, you kind of feel like um, this... this uh, this feeling that you feel when you slip into a trance or when you, you remember when you were on the Feywild and in your childhood, you kind of feel this, this feeling of, um, uh, repose. Like there's a, a gentleness to the feeling that's kind of coming over you. Um, and as you kind of feel it, um, as you kind of just get a sense for it, um, your eyes kind of, like adjust to the fact that you're here, but you're also in this really comfortable, like cozy, snuggly blanket. Um, and when you kind of snap to and turn away from the stone to look at everybody else, kind of, you know, confused and looking about, you see something strange kind of in the center of the summit. Uh, there's a, there appears that there is kind of glowing rocks underneath the surface of the stone or the, the dirt um, kind of in the center. Um, and it seems that those glowing stones underneath um, form a square, a perfect square in the center, more of a diamond really with the points pointing to each of the pillars. Um, so I tell them there's something underneath us that seems to be pointing to each pillar. Okay. And as you say that and kind of break your hand away from the stone, I'm assuming, uh, you hear this whisper in, um, you speak Sylvan, yes? Yep. You hear this whisper in Sylvan that seems to be just kind of for you. Um, and it says, the blood of Gavilus must be left here. Okay, I repeat that. I repeat it exactly. First in Sylvan and then again in common. Nobody understands you the first time. Because <laughs> I think you're the only one. I'm in a trance type thing, dude. I don't know what I'm seeing. As though he recites the words in common. The blood of Gavilus. Um, we'll do a little experiment. I'll take out a small surgical knife that I use use for dissecting things, and I'll kind of like, and I'll just cut my hand and just like let some blood run onto the stone. Just experiment it's the first time that you've really paid attention to your bleeding um in the last say month or so and strangely enough um you're not sure if it's the light um in this place or just you know you're you're you kind of spooping yourself out but your blood appears like black as it kind of drips onto the dirt like uh, black like an icor just like thick. yes well no its consistency doesn't change like it's still blood but its color is no longer like a bright vibrant red it's more of a like a thick squidding kind of uh color like almost sepia kind of you drip it where he says yeah as you kind of drip it into it, the stone comes alive, um, and out from it bursts um, a form. Um, it appears familiar to you. Um, you remember that when you traveled into the elemental plane of Earth, you encountered a creature like this. Uh, she appears to be an elemental weird. Um, a female entity of stone erupts from the Earth. I'm presuming that weapons are kind of brandished um, and shields are kind of readied as this strange form kind of appears. Um, it looks at you, um, uh, Eslo, uh, with kind of a hatred on its face and says in um, common or some language that strangely is kind of you're all able to understand um, it says the cursed blood returns the cursed blood must be spilt here and it kind of looks to everyone else and says if you seek justice 
in this world, if you seek for the darkness to be destroyed in this world, you must kill him. And she points at Aslo. Oh, no. No. No, 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 no. Hyphen starts to draw his sword, but he's looking between the weird and Ezlo. I'll respond. Let's see. You think my allies, who I've bled with for months, and I look towards Typhon, who we have, who I have, whose lives I have saved and they have saved mine, you think they would betray me at the word of you, elemental, primordial, known for your trickery? Known for your lies? Ha. You she think all of us mortals. She kind of lowers herself down so that she's kind of looking at you from like a higher stance, um, but just closer to you. And she says, I can hear your tongue, Gavilus. I can hear your lies. You are the one who wishes to betray these people here. If they fight with you, they die with you. And as she says that, she kind of like shudders back into herself and snaps back into the stone. Um, when she does, the whole place kind of quakes just a little bit. Shit. Back to the door. Back to the door now. Are you waiting? Hyphen starts pointing everybody towards the door and starts heading towards, like, back down the way they came, back towards the door. Yeah, we should probably run. Okay. As you kind of start to move towards the steps, you kind of look back towards the stone. Um, the stone kind of glows um, that bright green again. Um, and as it does so, out steps a form. Um, and it kind of like, as it kind of steps out, it says in Sylvan very loudly, stop. And the quaking just stops. It doesn't seem the earth is shaking any longer. And this form, as it kind of like becomes manifest and you can see it, um, you kind of recognize it. Um, uh, you kind of, you kind of recognize it, uh, Fenmar. It, it, it appears that this creature that's kind of manifested before you, um, is what's known as an arch fay. Um, this specific arch fay, um, is, uh, known as Corsheus. And Corsheus is the lord of the Ranian, and also the lord of all of hor all of the horses, and also the lord of unicorns. And he kind of steps out into the field, moving towards the center. I fucking bow down, dude. <laughs> you see the wilding kind of move towards this creature that kind of appears and bows down. It looks to you and it says, "You have called to me." Servant. Uh oh, I fucked up. <clears throat> it seems annoyed, um, but then he kind of like crosses his arms, kind of staring at you, feeling like you get the feeling that he's not, he's not like, he doesn't hate you for it. He's still going to answer to whatever you say, but it just seems like he seems uh, kind of put off, like he might have better things to do. Kind of like when your mom calls you into her room. Yeah. Like, grab a remote for I look her. Up at him and I kind of shrug and say, it was not I who summoned you, but, but him. And I point at the warlock, who I guess is running away. He kind of looks at you and he says, no, it was you who called me, Fenmar of the Greens. It was you who called me, Fenmar the Shepherd. It was you who called me, Fenmar the Warrior. And he's against, they're, they're still just talking in Sylvan, babble, babble, elvish talk at each other. Um, he says, it was definitely you who called to me. Did you seek protection? Did you seek guidance? I, say, I saw answers, for I'm in a strange place with strange people. Guidance, then. Very good. And he smiles at you um, and uh, kind of grins. Then I will... Bless, with, bless you with my boon, child. And I will make sure that you understand that the path before you can be accessed. But you must understand that words, as they are displayed by men, even the most ancient of men, are not reality. They are simply an interpretation of it. 
and he grins, walks over to you, kneels down, having not having to be like 15 or so feet tall, kneels down and kind of places his thumb on your forehead. And as he does so, like he kind of vanishes into like a wisp of um, gra- grass, just kind of grass floats off. Yeah. Yep. It'd be like a horse, like kicking up some grass, is how he vanishes, the unicorn lord. Um, One tear from my eye. <laughs> um, you feel this strange sense of like, um, like clarity. Like you kind of go, huh? And you remember the words on the door, um, and you kind of look up at the runes on the the stone, and you kind of see more than you saw before. And as you kind of look up into the sky, you see that this place that you stand in, you understand it. Um, you're standing in what's known as a focal point. Focal points can basically draw anyone to them. Um, you can't really transport out from them. But basically, this place, um, if someone knows what they're doing can basically be drawn to this place or someone who is here can kind of call someone to this place. Um, again, if they know what they're doing, um, you feel this kind of sense of oneness with like the entirety of the universe, the multiverse and beyond. Um, and you can actually see now that in the, uh, the distance in that focal point, um, you can see a black line kind of stretching across the entirety of the horizon um, or the skyline above you, like directly across that focal point. And you would understand that as the shadow, um, the plane of shadow, the shadow fell, the uh, Dargian rift that kind of just splays out above you. It just feels like even the most vile things and even the most benevolent things seem to be welcome here. So it's like a waypoint, but this one in particular yeah. for Shadow. I guess, yeah, exactly. Well, no, not not this one in particular for Shadow. It's for everything. Just you can happen to see now that it, it wasn't something that you were seeing before. It's like you didn't see the dark spaces as well. You were just seeing the starlights and the pinks and the purples. Um, and yeah, a waypoint's a perfect way of describing it. The best way I can describe it, like out of character, is it, you played Diablo 2, right? <laughs> Yeah, th- yeah. so basically if you found other locations in the world or in the universe that were like this one, that keyed to this one, and or if you knew how to get back to this one through magic, you could kind of end up here at will. Um, but you also understand the words that were on that door, and you're pretty sure you can figure them out. Okay, so I read. I read that. I, let's open this. Okay, um, the first words on the uh, the stone um, say, "If you have taken the orb of Gavilus from its cradle in the pit of Svenin, then you have defeated this great evil that rests beneath the temple of the four weirds." Congratulations, hero. This place for your final challenge, where you can purge away the curse of Gavilus for time. And then at the bottom it says, recite. And it's strange words um, that seem to be kind of an incantation. Basically, clata veratu nictum. Oh, God. I guess I try and read that, too. Okay, make me a, a charisma check to see if you pronounce them correctly. <laughs> um, unlike an Evil Dead scenario, um, nothing happens, um, but you take some time kind of speaking the words. Um, and with some assistance from a Vazriel speaker, you're able to kind of say the words um, outright. Uh, it takes a good minute or two and this passageway seems to open up into a stone hallway the stone hallway you see before you looks very similar to the stone hallway you had entered into this place and it seems that it goes on longer than you presume the summit of this place to be it looks like it descends into stone 
but for all intents and purposes should shoot out the back of this little mountain, but it seems to continue going into Earth. Sure as shit, I'm not going in first. <laughs> so it says that that's the door that was at the base of the altar, right? <laughs> Correct. And we're trying to escape this place, so we should probably... Are you trying to through. escape? Are you trying to run, or are you trying to go... I mean, you can run back the steps. If you're trying to leave, you can just leave out the way you came in. This place seems... Or this door seems to continue on further in. But wait, the realm is stable now, right? Because uh, yes. Unicorn Guy said, stop that shenanigans. Yeah. He appeared and said, did you seek protection? Did you seek guidance? And he asked for guidance. Yeah, I got the door open, dude. I'll get in here, coward. And he said, it's cool. Me and me and Unicorn Man are, are tight. Yes, I know him from way back when, dude. We went to school together. I, did anyone I else see that entity, or was it kind of like oh, a one-on-one? Yeah. -on -one? You all saw him. Cool. Yeah, just long enough for Typhon to be like, whoa. He starts looking around going, very you, very you? Congratulations. I named him an honor. I'm more ecstatic. I'm like, oh my god, it's a fucking unicorn. It's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ride him. If you guys enter into the passageway, you'd see that the stories continue, but these stories seem to be different. Um, and it seems to be warring between four females. Um, you presume that they're all related because they're all drawn or carved rather in a very similar style. Uh, but each one seems to be kind of a representation of an elemental fire, water, earth, air. Um, and it seems that there's no winner. It just seems to be a long blathering on in Vazriel um, concerning this um, this this war. Um, and you finally come to another door. Uh, this door is different. Um, in that it looks like it can kind of just be pushed open and it has no markings on it. Um, it looks like it's just a door that can be kind of pushed inwards to open it. I use Thaumaturgy to open it if it's unlocked. Okay. Um, you blast open the door, uh, which kind of sends the stone flying back and then falling inward. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> what? Um, it hits the ground with a loud thunk, um, and you see beyond it a large chamber. Um, it looks like a very well-worked chamber. Um, there are pillars, and the center of this chamber is a statue of what appears to be four um, soldiers, perhaps. Um, you're pretty sure that they're female, um, and you notice similar motifs to the ones on the walls. Um, hold on a second here. Let me just get you on the map. Bear with me here for a second. Oh, come on now. Sorry, my computer's doing no oh, yeah. And that was um, in order. That would have been Typhon and Krun up front, Eslo and um, Fenmar behind, correct? Yup. Oh, yeah. Yeah, four armored warriors uh, before you. Did it switch? It didn't switch, did it? There we go. There we go. Should be switching. Ooh. Oh, no. Black. Oh, you don't have sight. Hold on. Oh, God. Do I recognize the, the arms and armor? Uh, they appear to be very Vazriel in style. Um, like ancient, ancient. 
Yeah. You presume yeah. if they weren't carved of stone, they would be made of bronze. Ah, okay. I... How about now, Kevin? Kevin. Oh, shit. I used the wrong hockey. Yeah, that's good. I can see. Okay, great. So you see a dais up at the top of the dais. You see that there's, um, of course, the four statues. It's dark within. There appear to be kind of alcoves with bones kind of resting in them. Um, as though you're a bit keen, more keen-eyed than the rest. It looks like there's some sort of crypt on the far end of the chamber. Um, this place is very Vazriel. Um <laughs> as Vasriel as, as you've ever seen. Um, it looks like the statues in the corners, if you kind of look around the wall that you're hiding in, the alcove that you're hiding in, uh, you would see that there appear to be more statues, those ones carrying chain weapons, um, which are pretty well-known uh, Vasriel ar artifacts. We seem to be in some sort of tomb, but whose uh, tomb? Typhon draws his sword out. So he's yeah. got a sword and shield up, and he slowly moves forward, looking everywhere for any sign of movement or uh, anything that looks more recent than this place. Great. As you kind of draw your sword out and kind of move into the room, you notice something strange. Your sword seems to be kind of emanating kind of a bluish aura. Um, your shield is also kind of emanating a bluish aura. And is your armor magical or no? Uh, it is not. Okay. It does not glow. Um, uh, I the ring and then I also have my cloak. As you're kind of looking around, you can see that magical auras are definitely being displayed um, in normal vision. Uh, Krun's armor seems to be glowing as well. Um, it, nothing on Fenmar. Oh, wait. I apologize. Fenmar actually has some cool stuff, I think. Right? No. no. Yeah, you don't have any magical items. Everybody else does. Focus, which I guess would be like, I don't know, like probably some flower on my spear. But yeah. yeah. Uh, everybody else seems to have some sort of glowingness to them. Ooh, what color are my it's my are my leather everything's tentacles? everything's blue if it's a magic item. Hey Kevin, is there any way you could turn your mic up? No, you have to like turn me up. Okay. And you have Arcana trained, right, Ezlo? Yep. So you know that it's not displaying magical auras it, because magical auras they wouldn't all be blue. It's just displaying like a kind of there's kind of a something that's causing. Um, items of artifice um magical items to kind of glow this bluish color all right with that being said is can i see anything in the room that is glowing that isn't on us um yeah so um up before you there's that sarcophagus and you can kind of see it with your eyes um it's not really glowing blue in your dark vision um but you can kind of see it but just it, faintly. It's a different shade of gray than everything else. Yeah, yeah like there's a lighter kind of, shade. There's kind of like this strange like shades of gray. Um, all fifty of them. <laughs> um, there seems to be something kind of inside of the sarcophagus, and there appear to be things on these small spots uh, to the sides of them. But the statues are not glowing or anything like that. Um, so Typhon was moving into the room. What I wanted to do was I wanted to move here and use Divine Sense. Um, that's your second use of it. Um, they don't appear to, uh, it doesn't appear to elicit any kind of, um, information. Uh, there don't appear to be fiends, undead, um, celestials. Uh, this place does not appear to be consecrated or desecrated. Hmm. There's something okay. in that coffin. Something that's still active with the spark of magic. Typhon turns and looks at Ezlo and he says, You want me to take a look? I want you to open it. Very well. Too far behind. <laughs> Damn, dude. 
Oh, wait, yeah. Like, how, how formidable does Krung look? No, he looks pretty beefy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Then there's a Krun, and he says, keep an eye on them. Sure thing. And he starts, Typhon starts moving up. Okay, as you pass the dais, you hear a voice coming from the sarcophagus, and it kind of booms out. Everybody can hear it as well, and it kind of echoes. Blood of my blood, you have come. You have come to bring me my orb. You hear kind of a shaking of stone at the sarcophagus site. Oh. Ivan stops and looks at as well. He says, well, best answer the man. I'll return your orb if you will leave your, if you will remove your stench and presence from my body. There've, there's not enough room in here. You cannot have that gift unless I spill your blood all about the stars. And the stone keeps shaking, and you can actually hear it, Typhon, sliding um, at this point. Yeah, Typhon's going to try and definitely get there before he finishes getting out. Edgelord here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you kind of get close to it, and you can see that it's slid open, and a hand is kind of reaching out of it. It walks up and fucking cuts the hand off. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make an attack roll. All right. Do me a favor and make a uh, strength saving throw. All right. Yeah. As you 26. smash the hand with your sword, your sword doesn't bite into the flesh at all. It's like you would strike break your sword against a stone wall and you feel a vibration kind of shake through your hand and kind of like you have a hard time holding onto the blade um, as you kind of curiously do so if you'd like you can go ahead and make your next attack John do you see this extra icon no weird I'm um, going to yeah. the Lord did uh oh uh, you hit it, uh, and you seem to strike into it, and it kind of bites into the stone a bit. Um, yeah, hold on, because yeah. I want to smite. Okay. There. All right. Um, it seems that the radiant doesn't really do anything to it. Um, it seems to be immune to the radiant damage. Um, but you do kind of cut into it with the sword, um, and it kind of causes it to kind of bite away. Uh, bear with me here while I go ahead and place him, because he's going to go ahead and remove himself from there. One second. Ah! This bastard's flesh is as tough as stone. Oh, good. Yeah. Sounds like we'll have a easy time of it. Do I need to make another saving throw? Uh, no, you did not not hit it. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Awesome. I, I love when the plan comes to. Mm -hmm. Do you have stuff preset and then it falls apart right there in your hands? Cool. Um, proxy. I love it when it doesn't save the shit, the work you do. So was Typhon able to conjure his divine magic like pretty easily? It just didn't have any effect? Yeah, it seems that uh, the radiant damage didn't really do anything to the stone. Okay. Or the skin of the thing. 
I just wanted to make sure that he, we weren't in like a null magic zone or something, because then I would just probably let him kill me. <laughs> Wait, what? If, bro, if I can't cast spells, might as well just die. <laughs> That's literally my life. Casting spells, making potions. Yeah, you're in a null magic zone, and you like open your pocket, and your fucking familiar is just like a puddle of goop. Okay, so to explain what you see kind of appear before you as it kind of exits out of the sarcophagus, um, it appears to be just kind of this grayish, sloppy mess um, that kind of spills out. Um, It kind of takes on an almost human form for just a moment, um, but then it kind of pushes you or pushes its way out onto the floor near you. um, And uh, they kind of changes its form so that eyes and mouths kind of open up from it. Um, And you kind of get this strange sensation that um, it's not made out of liquid. It's made out of stone. Are there any parts of it that look like they're not covered in stone? No. Even its teeth and mouth, um, even though they look kind of fleshy, have kind of a strange stone-like quality. Like, the tongue is kind of like a pinkish color, but it's more of like a quartz kind of pinks than a flesh kind of pink. Damn, I wish Denon was here. This would be a piece of cake. I was going to Bunder would just be, like, fully erect. He'd be like, oh, it's made of ore. Let's kill it and harvest it. A creature made out of rock. I want to sex it up. I want to turn it into a magic item. <laughs> you would notice, too, that the form of it it's taking, it seems to kind of have appendages, I guess. Um, hold on, let me see if I can get you a picture of it. Looks like custom art. I thought you guys would definitely try to fight the beard. That'd have been fun. Oh, uh, I mean, to be fair, Typhon did for a moment consider killing Ezlo. <laughs> Good to know. I hope you would lose your powers for that. I've saved your life before. Oh, I know. That's why he didn't. He had this like brief internal struggle between he's sworn to do and his loyalty to his friends. What did Kevin say? said I'm not considering it. Unicorn Jesus told me not to believe the lies of men. <laughs> oh, good. 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 <laughs> Unicorn Jesus. What did you name him? Uh, whatever I typed in there. I thought it was like crisis or cry cry crisis. I don't know. I was trying to go for Kevin something, because originally someone wanted to play a warlock and wanted to do Archfey. I think I don't remember who it was. They were talking about unicorns. Kevin Loran, the horse lord. God damn it! Where is this? Should have been the horse wizard. Was it Bane? Okay, so this is just a rough scan, so I apologize, but uh, this is kind of what the form looks like. Oh boy. Um, and you can see that it's kind of like manifesting kind of hands to the side of it. Um, and its mouth at the top seems to kind of occasionally jut out a tongue, but at other points kind of juts out a spike. Um, it almost has kind of like a three tiered shape despite the weird tentacles to it um, and its tail. But uh, the shape that you're kind of seeing, it's kind of familiar to you, Ezlo, in that it seems to be sometimes kind of shaping into a Triskelion. Yeah. At another time, we may have been allies, fiend. Roll initiative. Ooh! Ooh, wow, what the fuck? Ooh, that's what I like to see. Fun. That's what I like to see. 
Oh, I hope we is, go first. Is the statue in the middle? How obscuring is it for the purpose of ranged attack? Hundred percent. Okay. How about just the stairway yeah, run up? Like... Doesn't go at all. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit here and fucking browse ye old I mean, face you, it, looking down yeah. on my medieval phone. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh shit. It also rolled really high. Zero, really? I mean, if he oh, would have uh, had a negative two to Dex, he probably would have started moonwalking out of the room. <laughs> okay. So, first things first. Uh, Typhon, go ahead and make me a... Well, how much Dex does your guy have? Let's, let's be real. Uh, bear with me here. No, because if my Dex is higher than this thing, then I get to go first. Uh, Dex is a 16. What's yours? Damn it. Never mind. Okay. Um, first things first. Um, go ahead and make me a strength saving throw type in. The 13. Okay. Uh, do you add that to yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah you do. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. And I've got the other plus one from my ring. Right. Um, you said 13, right? Yeah. All fails. Um, you are... Your speed is reduced to zero uh, oh. until the start of its next turn. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, its form kind of descends down into the ground, like melting like candle wax, um, and uh, it moves. When it does so, um, it does so in such a fashion that makes it um, not subject to your silly opportunity attacks. I it stabbed seems, the floor anyways. It seems that your feet are encased in the stone. Um, so yeah, your speed um, for the current time until the um, end of its next turn is zero. All right, it yeah. moves to there. Um, it will remain in puddly form, um, so it is prone. Um, it ha You have disadvantage uh, range attacks against it, and you would have advantage against it with oper or melee attacks. All right. Uh, Eslo. All right. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'm going to... Uh... Put a hex on me. I'm going to give you a freebie first. Um, make me just a perception check. Nope. Okay. All right. You cast hex. Uh, I will choose wisdom. Okay. And I ain't getting close to it. So I'll still try to, I'll attempt to range attack it even with disadvantage, because there's no way I'm getting close to it. Ooh, they might still hit. Um, first one does, second one doesn't, but when you hit it, you notice that it doesn't seem to damage it. Like at all? Not at all. Well, does it will it take the does it take the necrotic damage at all from the hex? Necrotic, yes, it will take that. <coughs> Damn! But it seems uh. to be immune to the force damage. All right. Before I end my turn, I'm just gonna use a free action to quickly look at uh Krona and be like, "Son of a Veru, defend me while I weave another spell. I must. Uh. It will take me but a moment. You can't give me orders if you can't even pronounce my god's name correctly." <laughs> what is it? Is I, it a Veru? A Veru? A Veru? Son of a Veru, defend me while I weave another spell. It will take me but a moment. It's like it's like cut, and you see like the the little like snap snaps together, and then the director kind of goes, "Okay, let's try it again from the top." Yeah. And we're gonna hide behind this pillar. Type in while, while I do so. You're typing in the distance. It's a Veru. It's pronounced a Veru. <laughs> yeah, you cunt screams it as he's being ripped apart. No, he's just like his feet are glued to the floor. Yeah. I'm a high behind this pillar and end my turn. Oh, good. Mm. Goddamn, force damage doesn't work. That's 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 my main jam. Neither does Radiant. Okay. 
All right. Um, Typhon, you are up. Your speed is zero. Uh, can I attempt to break free from the stone? Uh, you can give it a try, I guess, uh, as an action. Yep. Athletics or? Uh, strength athletics, sure. Okay. Now, for whatever reason, it says my proficiency bonus is plus five. So just minus two from whatever this roll is. So 20. Sure. Okay. So fail. One second here. I can fix your proficiency bonus. It's only on my skills, though. Everything else is plus three. Yeah. Should be fixed. Are you good? Um. Yeah. Thanks. Showing good for me. All right, Fenmar. So this weird thing, puddle of stone, is kind of laying out before you, some thirty feet ahead of you. Um, it looks like a vicious kind of creature. Um, I will give you a freebie. Go ahead, make a perception check. So good, dude. Yep. Um, okay, go ahead. Why can't we see? So, like, but it's not an actual body right now. Yeah. It's basically a puddle. Yeah. There's there seems to be some tangibility to it, but it's probably about an inch or two thick. Shit, man. What's the range on poison spray? Ten feet. I think so. Okay, go ahead and do me a favor and make a strength saving throw once you get to that point. Oh, God. Having ran into the uh, the matter, um, not really seeing um, what there was to see before, but now kind of unfortunately seeing what there is to be seen, um, you would see that... The creature uh, apparently um, is distorting the stone around it as it moves. And as you step into the stone, you sink into it and your foot becomes caught. Your speed is reduced to zero um, until the end of its next turn. If you start your turn in the, uh, the field, you can reattempt your strength saving throw. Uh, okay. And you poison spray at it, so it'll go ahead and make a con saving throw. All right. This is uh, acid damage? Or poison? Oh, poison. Okay, I'll just ignore it. Oh. I am also immune to poison. You guys are really throwing on the fun here. You can't poison a rock? What is this? <laughs> Real life? Poison a rock, you can't radiant a rock, you can't... The spear, dude. Um, <laughs> you should be able to blast a rock apart. Eh. With, that's how jackhammers work. It's force. Yeah. Immune... Damage immunities, force, poison, radiance, and that's it. Fire. No, it's not immune or to fire. Lightning. It's not immune to lightning. Oh, okay. So, radiant, force, and poison. Correct. The three that you have used <laughs> are our main forces, like, source, sources of damage. Yeah. With our two oh, no. produce flame. <laughs> or, I'll give you. I'll give you a freebie here, Ezlo. Go ahead and make an Arcana check. Just so I'm not catching you off guard. You're not saying <laughs> Meta Dupre. It's no, it's just. Now. So you would realize that this creature seems to be some sort of weird aberration. Uh, you would know just by its weird nature that it's immune to the prone condition. Plus, it's exacting it upon itself. Um, it's immune to charmed, exhaustion, frightened, paralyzed, poisoned. Um, 
it seems that it's not seeing with its eyes, even though it has them. It could probably see with its eyes, but it seems to be kind of moving like it, its eyes aren't really staring or focusing on anything. Um, it obviously understands the language that you've already cited. Um, and uh, you would presume just based on it, it's probably really strong. It's got a really high constitution. Um, and it seems to be smarter than your average kind of buddy. Well, 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 how is street smart? <laughs> He's not very wise. He's probably not very wise. Yeah, that's what I thought. And yeah, yeah, my plan yep. my work. He's, my not, work. he's not immune to psychic. He's not immune to, you know, any of those conditions. So when yeah. you hexed him, what what ability did you choose? Wisdom. Excellent. Bro, I don't know. I don't with paladins. I know I know the drill. And you, would you would also assume that the reason why it's probably immune to force, um, and also, sorry, it's also immune to damage from non-magical weapons, uh, but you would assume that the reason why that's the case is because of its fluidity. When you're hitting it, you're not striking solid stone. You're striking this strange kind of non-Newtonian substance. <laughs> it just lives up to its name. It's weird. It, it's This is not a weird. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, this is from what you can tell, this is Gavilus. All right, Crun, you're up. You can see the strangeness in the stone around it. So, yeah, what is the, what's that like radius around it? So the stone seems to be kind of warping at its like touch and movement. Uh, when Fenmar ran up to step in to fight it, his foot kind of slipped into the stone a bit, and he seems to be kind of stuck there. <laughs> So it's like, it's like a soft mud like stone. stone. Yeah. And it's catching him. It's holding him in place. Uh, so is it, it's, it's like, is it like solid now that it like dry up or can I like try to pull him out? It seems that anybody who tries to go, you could probably try and pull him out, but if you were to go into it, you would want to either jump at it or um, be really strong and kind of force your feet through it. True. Uh, trying to move up and try to pull him out. Okay, go ahead and make a strength athletics check. And you have assistance because I assume Fenmar is and um, isn't going to try to resist. Well, don't help me. I'm above that. <laughs> okay, so you pull Fenmar out. And you can kind of pull them either to here or to here, whichever you prefer, Fenmar. Go ahead and move you where you want. Okay. Uh, that's, your action. that's your action. Um, it looks like some of the stone kind of falls from his feet. Um, it starts off to kind of flow off of his foot like a liquid, and then it kind of brittily falls off like uh, pieces of concrete. Um, but yeah, you pull them out. You still have um, several squares of movement left if you'd like. Um. If I was to go here, would this like I be in that shit? No, that square is fine. As long if the square is majority covered with the gray circle, then it's bad town. If it's not, then you're good. Uh, actually, no. I'll. I'll Stare here. Okay. Uh, have a pretty good idea what you're trying to do, fool. Yeah. Well, it snaps in at you guys. Uh, both of you go ahead and make strength saving throws. Okay. Benmar, welcome back to being stuck in the floor. And. Crun, you're fine as well. Um, <laughs> Crun, you're fine by yourself. The other one's stuck in the floor. Um, seeing that you're the stronger of the two, it's going to go ahead and try and overpower the um, the Wilden. Did a ready to action to move. Okay. 
Sorry, bear with me here. That is weird. Why is it not? Ugh. Okay, perfect. Come on and slam, and welcome to Japan. So against the Wilden, against the Wilden. Swing and a miss, swing and a miss, right? 14 hits. Okay, take eight bludgeoning damage as it kind of bashes into you. Do you have protection um, or you know you have defense? Never mind. Okay, so yeah, that'll hit for eight. Pretty solid hit. Um, Kron, you notice that your new friend, uh, after getting bashed by this thing, seems to be kind of bleeding uh, a bit where it slammed him in the shoulder. Okay. Ezlo? All right, I'll come uh, walking back down so I can see it, and I'll come in doing some, some, some crazy-ass hand gestures like that. And I'm going to cast <laughs> on him. Fucking... Get slow, bitch. Get fucking slow. Okay. Um, and I have disadvantage or what? Disadvantage. Yeah, you're chunk, fucking chunk, slow. Chunk, chunk. You're fucking slow. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's my that's my action. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Hmm. So I'm free to move now, right? The stone yeah. has become solidified and you were shunted out of it. Uh, I'm going to dash. So, 60 feet. Um, Ezlo, you would also notice that um, it appears that the uh, entity's wounds, if it had any, there, it doesn't appear to be wounded at all. The plot thickens. Actually, grade. let's move. But it's there. slow. If it was writhing, it's writhing slower. Oh, it is writhing slower. That is correct. Okay. So, uh, from where I'm at, I'm going to cast Compelled Duel on it. Okay. Not really a casting, but yeah. So, it's Wisdom Saving Throws, period, correct? Yep. Okay. Well, let me just make sure it's not just my spells so we don't cheat. It's okay. It's just going to turn to sand and jump out of the armor and. <laughs> it's going to come out of the. Yeah, it's it's just all spells. So. What? I think it'll be okay. What? Oh shit! What's your what's your DC? Fourteen. Oh. <laughs> he said, "Fight me," and he was like, "No, I'll be okay without it." <laughs> oh fuck. Ah! Okay, that's my turn. All right. Um, Fenmar, um, you can uh, make a strength saving throw at the start of your turn to try and um, kind of get out of it. I'm going to metagame free one right now. If I shapeshift, would that free my leg? Depends on what you shapeshift into. What are you planning on training, changing into? Shapeshifting at level two, my list is very small. Uh, for sure. You break your leg if you don't have any bones. <laughs> Probably going to want to shape turn something that has bigger legs than you or smaller. I mean, I could turn into a spider, but poison, no bueno. Turn into a badger. I don't know how well that would go. Badgers have a burrowing speed. Get, get in his belly. Oh, let's do it, dude. <laughs> Bur burrow into him. Okay, so it's a giant badger, which are still medium sized, correct? I think so. Yeah. Hold on a second. <laughs> Dig speed. Crazy ass hand maneuvers, and I keep looking at this gift. To, to... I was trying to find one where the guy's like making a cube, but that was way too specific. Roll 20 is so fucking laggy. Hmm. Like, D20 
Do you guys use Chrome or like what browser do you use to run this? Firefox. I'm using Chrome. Also Chrome. All right. You should have control of that badger. All right. I'm still waiting for control. So what we know. Immune to force, regenerates on each turn. Uh, I have just the spell. At this point, I'm just going to try and free myself. So am I still stuck? No, you have a burrow speed. Um, you don't care. Hold it. Can I, uh... Can I use my action to disengage, or is mm -hmm. my action just to shape shift? Oh, um, yeah, your action would be to, dis uh, to, sh to shape shift. But because of the nature of your change, um, I'll say you can go ahead and adjust five feet as you kind of turn into a badger because you're kind of pulling your feet out and, like, moving away. Make sense? Yeah, but does that mean he can swing at me or I'm okay? <laughs> no, no, no. You get a free five feet. You're basically plopping. Basically, what you do is, is you kind of turn yourself into a badger and your feet kind of turn into badger feet and your butt turns into a badger butt and your head turns into a badger head, and your hands turn into badger hands, but you're doing this all as you're rocking back in a way. Your badger claws back and kind of waddle off in the side. It's adorable. All right, and then I'm going to run. <laughs> you, you acro match it. All right, that's good for now. Okay. The situation. And I'm leaving your token in its current position, just as a notation. Um, it's not really there. Crown, you're up. It, it, the guy next to you gets, you know, wailed on, then turns into a badger and runs away. You've seen druids before. It's not the first time. <laughs> a tear comes to your eye. Uh, so, like, nothing is worth on this fucking asshole, right? No poison, no force, no radiance. Um, it was slowed. Um, that, that helped. Um, I mean, have we actually tried the old standard and just beating it? Someone did swing at it um, and hit it and wounded it, but um, you don't see any wounds on it. Uh, what do? I mean, you could swing on it. Yeah, you definitely have a, you know. Do you have a magic weapon? Hitting with an axe is never a bad idea, especially for an orc. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, you have a magic weapon. That'll hit. Um, that'll damage. Um, yeah, definitely a solid strike. Hey, let's go. All right. Um, any bonus actions? Do you want a uh, shield of faith on yourself? Anything cool like that? Uh... Plus two AC in its face. Uh... No. See. Okay. All right, all right. AC is uh, 20. It's pretty solid. It's not type and Gucci, but it's good. That kid's all AC. Um, okay, goes to it. So go ahead and multi. You can only attack Slam. Once. Oh, right, 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 slow. And it's going to fail real hard. Um, it seems to be kind of just sloppily throwing itself at you, Crun, which you can easily just keep your shield between it and your, you know, your body. Um, you're fine. It's annoyed. It's going to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, 
All right. Uh, Eslo, you're up. All right. I'm going to give him the... Shit. Damn it. I wanted to chill touch him, but I missed. <laughs> um, definitely a, a miss. Um, okay. Go ahead, uh, Typhon. Um, so seeing as how I was stuck in this stuff before, can I see You're all aware this? of it. Okay, is there any way I can, like, jump to clear it and get to him before yeah. I make contact with it? Yeah, and you have a strength of 10 or higher, right? Yeah. Okay, you can jump at it. That's fine. Okay, and for the sake of theatrics, can I, like, do, a like, a jump thrust? Sure. So basically how it works for this is if you're jumping and attacking at it, you will have advantage for the attack because you're kind of jumping into it, but you'll have dis you're attacking recklessly. You'll have disadvantage for your ace attacks against you because you're kind of catching yourself strange footing. Make sense? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and land next to him and swing it, swing it, swing it. Okay. Um... Okay. Yep. That's what I'm going to do. I want to land. Can I land right here? It's fine. Okay. Nice. Uh, it. Yes. And I'm going to use my Lumiere ability to make all that fire damage. And do I get my second attack? Uh, yeah, you would. No, oh, nice. All right, so you guys watch as Typhon kind of leaps in at the creature with his sword, strikes hard into its mouth jaw thing, kind of spins around with a flaming sword. Um, and the flame kind of, because it only is one strike, right? So the first one's fire. And then uh, kind of blazes around and strikes again, chips of it kind of flying off. Um, where he struck, then... it seems those brittle chips are kind of flying aside. And do you have a bonus action? Uh... Compelled duel. Okay. Yes. Fail. Um, on a failed save, the creature is drawn to you, compelled by your divine demand. For the duration, it has a disadvantage on attack rolls against any other creature. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, Fenmar. Go uh, body him. Using the wrong button again. Okay, so as a bonus action, I can drop my form. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna drop okay. my form, and then I'm gonna use my Circle the Shepherd ability to summon one of the three animal spirits. I'm gonna summon Spirit of the Eagle. <laughs> okay. And so you summon an eagle. Yeah, it gra lets me use my reaction to give someone advantage on an attack. I oh, okay. Cool. Um, who would you like to give it to? Uh, it says an, it emits an aura, well, I believe, is 60 feet, and then I can use a bonus action to move it. So let's put it, you know, let's make it fly around fucking, what's your name, Typhon. 60 feet is essentially this whole room. Yeah, but it's just gonna, you know, it's flying around them, you know, it's flying around the battle. Caca! Glorious. Is it like a spectral bird? It's like a spirit, right? I don't know. I would or is it like an actual eagle? That's how I'm imagining it, is that it's like, yeah, like a spirit. Glorious. It says, level two, you gain the ability to call forth nature spirits and use them to influence the world around you. Magically summon an incorporeal spirit. Yeah. Uh, you can see within 60 feet around you, the spirit creates an aura, a 30-foot radius. It counts as neither a, a creature nor an object, has a spectral appearance of the creature it represents. Okay, so an eagle. Alright. And so one person gets advantage, is what you're saying. When a creature makes an attack roll against a target in the spirit's aura, you can use your reaction to grant advantage to that attack roll. Okay, so you can use your reaction to grant advantage to an attack roll. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Crun.
Same with Jammer? Does that hit? Probably not, because he's made of stone. Uh, that will miss, unless you have advantage for it. What's the creature's AC, like base? Um, you would presume at this point it's probably somewhere around 17 or 18. Okay, that's <laughs> fine then. No, just because minus two. Use your reaction! Eagle! Oh, I have a plan. I have a plan. Oh, I've seen this movie before. It doesn't end well for anyone, even the guy with the plan. <laughs> we're all we're all fucking dead. I'm just leaving. We're all gonna end up in the hole with the with the giant with the rat king again. Or wait for the guy who used some crazy magic. Like, come come on. Uh. Well, well, he's still slowed, so. Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna sit here and do the old standard. Wait, hold on it every turn until it doesn't move anymore. Yeah, it sucks you guys can't, like, smite it. Well, I mean, luckily we found that out. <laughs> so we don't have to waste more spells <laughs> trying to smite it. Yeah. Alright, make your pathetic slam attack. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked with something. Um, real life. Hold on a second here. Dog, is there a way to fucking like stop people's messages on Discord? Like, why can that happen? I don't know. I don't know. Um, you could mute him. I think. Yeah, you could just block him and then unblock him after. Yeah, just right click his name, select block. Yeah, I didn't want to do that though. I just want to know. If there's a way to like. Just like Dota, dude, mute them all and burn them as fire. <laughs> Dota and CS and any other game. Don't listen to all these moves. Yeah, but see, it says like it will remove them from my friends list. Like, how would I unblock? I don't know. I don't know. Sorry about that, you guys. It's all right, man. Okay, so um, instead of slam a jamma, it's going to attempt to engulf uh, that Typhon kid. All right. Let's see if this works. Oh, um, one thing first. At the start of its turn, Typhon and Krun, both of you make strength saving throws. Uh, you get plus three to that, so yeah, you're he's good. 18. You're good. Um, strength mm -hmm. at twenty-four. Okay, so slow. All right. Yeah, yeah. dude. And then uh, Typhon, I need you to guys. make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, All right. Is the thing it's doing like a natural ability, or is it casting a spell? It's an attack. Okay. It's natural. I got a 16. Sorry, bear with me here. It's not it's not showing up, is it? What? Your dexterity saving throw? No, the ability. Oh, I'm clicking it, and for some reason it's not. Okay, here we go. Okay. So Gavlos attempts to there it goes engulf one creature that you can see within range it's five feet. It's not listed. It's such a dumb. Uh, on a failed save, the creature is drawn into him, swallowed by his liquid form. The creature takes fourteen bludgeoning damage or half on a success. The creature is engulfed for one minute and takes the damage again at the start of its turn. Um, it repeats the saving throw, but only to half the damage. During the engulfed creature's turn, it can attempt to escape as its action, making a strength saving throw against the ability's DC, but with disadvantage. The creature outside of it can help him get out, and the save is made as normal instead. Okay, uh, two things. First, uh, so I take the 14 damage. 
Yes. Okay, oh, so man. what, 52 minus 14, that's 38? Yes. 38. Um, as a reaction, Hellish Rebuke. Oh, yes, yes. Nice. Yeah, so he goes to engulf me, and as soon as he completely closes around Typhon, you you hear like a muffled... Poof. You actually see it's smoke smart. start emitting out of all of the orifices of the creature, and it kind of starts wiggling around him in a uh, annoyed fashion. Um, um, saving throw, but you have disadvantage. And then... Uh, concentration... Yeah, and so I dealt 14, so half to 7, so just 10 for your constitution saving throw. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. I still want to only fight you. All right. And that was its action. It's going to attempt the wisdom saving throw for slow. It's still slowed. All right, Ezlo, you're up. All right, you. Let's try this again. Oh my god. It won't even matter. What's up with these rolls, dude? You are rolling great tonight. Like, one and one. Don't even. Yeah. All right, Typhon, go ahead and make a strength saving throw. Okay. Uh, strength saving throw. That's a 10. So you'll be taking 12 points of damage. And then as your action, you can attempt to uh, leave the thing, or you can ready your action to attempt to leave when you get assistance. So, tw so 12 damage puts me at 20... 26. Yeah. Um... Did you hear me on the? You could, as your action, you can kind of ready an action to get help and be pulled out. Um, okay, let me see the. Uh... I'm back. What happened? Against this ability, CC. So yeah, you can either. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to ready my action to try and get out. Okay. All right, um, so and also concentration. You unbadgered, right? All right, yeah, I had to. Okay. Um, so you would lose concentration on. Oh uh, no, because I have, I have plus four. Yeah. Oh, you're fine then. Yeah. Okay. All right, Fenmar. Um, you can see Krun's kind of body, kind of like um, oozing out. You can kind of see his hand, kind of like jutting out of one of the mouths. Looks like he's trying to reach out for something. Wait, I'm back. I'm fucking pissed. What happened? Did this thing, did this thing eat me, dude? No, 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 no. It swallowed Chad. Um, it still has Chad in it. Typhon. It still has Typhon in it. I was gonna say you said he's... my character's name, so I was confused. Oh, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, I'm on. Uh, well, he's got two paladins of a very um, dream team, buddy. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm basically waiting for someone to help me get out of there. I should just crash. I won't be able to reach him. Um, I don't know. You got any spells you can cast at it? Well, if I was in the program, totally. Like I could fairy fire the shit out of it. You want me to go ahead and click it for you? Go for it. Okay, hold on. Can I make a suggestion, though? Thunder wave. Sure. Oh, I didn't roll too good on the damage, but. Hmm. Actually, no, that's not the spell I thought it was. Let's go with the very fire. Uh, were you thinking shatter? No, um, maybe. Yeah, cast on stuff. <laughs> Because wisdom. 
It'll have the deck save, but you still have disadvantage. Yeah, I'll still take the one. Um, two, two, two. So yeah, you guys have advantage on attack rolls against it, and it can't hide from you. Okay, Crun. Um, you can see his hand is kind of sticking out. If you want to, you can help him. Um, he can go ahead and make a strength saving throw um, to try and remove himself from it, but he does so with... Um, sorry, the way I worded it was wrong. It should be with advantage of help. With yeah. disadvantage, without help. Okay. My brother! I fucking grab his hand and pull with all my brutish half-orc strength. Right. So, Typhon, go ahead and make me a strength saving throw. That's a 20. Yep, you're good. Um, let's go ahead and get you out of there. You can go to any square that's adjacent to it and Crun. So either the bottom or diagonal, whichever. Back to where I was. <laughs> all right. Cool, cool, cool. Now All right, go ahead. Beating the shit out of him. Go ahead and roll me a d6. Anybody? Okay, so it'll go ahead and attempt to swallow Crown this time. Remember, you got plus three on the saving throw. Go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. You mean minus plus oh, two? Oh, God, dexterity. <laughs> no, don't fuss with me, dude. Ooh. <clears throat> Welcome to my belly. Take 10 points of bludgeoning damage, and uh, you are inside of me. No! And wisdom saving throw versus your slow bullshit. Yeah, so slow. Nope. God. My AC is super low. I have fairy fire. No one just swell, swollen, just attacking this thing. Um... So the blow that Crun landed the other couple rounds ago, that's that's gone now, right? It's healed. Yeah. Uh, and it has taken fire damage since its last turn. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Fire, acid. Okay, never blah 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 blah. Um uh, you had me roll strength to get swallowed. No, no, dexterity for swallowing. Strength saving throw to get out. Okay. Either way, I got in and then got out. So oh, I have an idea. <laughs> well, As well. John gave me some valuable information accidentally. What? No, nothing. I'm going to reach into my robes and pull out a vial of teal liquid and I'll get at it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You have advantage on attack rolls versus it? Yep. Um, is it save for half or just save to ignore? Oh, uh, <coughs> it doesn't matter. Damn. Oh, it's yeah. The dexterity is on this at the end of your turn. You can, or oh, on your turn, okay. you can use an action to put out the flames. <laughs> okay, roll a d4. It's gonna be three for that turn, and then at the start of. The... Oh, okay. Gotcha. I see the I see the number there. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, you set it ablaze. Um, yeah, seems to be kind of when it burns. Um, what you're seeing is that its uh, stone form is solidifying and becoming brittle and kind of breaking off. Um, all right, Typhon, um, you know that he's in there and he helped you get out. Um, you'll need to use your action to help him, and on his turn, he'll have advantage on his save. Or you can attack him while he's I mean, inside. It's strength to get out, right? It's a strength saving throw from the person inside, yes. So you can help him to give him advantage. Oh, yeah. yeah or yeah, you can leave him in there to have any of his advantage. kind of a big deal. So can I attack while... You can only, the only action you can take while inside is escape. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Fenmar, you are up. Uh, uh, I don't even know. Life is hard. Um, my fucking uh -oh. shit's frozen. Can you just cast a tangle for me? Yeah. Okay, so um, it's going to go ahead and uh, 
save and it doesn't care about difficult terrain so if it could move on its turn instead of just taking the one action um it would totally not care um but yeah it's not entangled um typhon we'll assume that it casts behind him instead of in front of him so i'm i'm in the safe zone yeah yeah okay Or I guess, move, yeah. Like so. Okay. Um, Kron, uh, go ahead and make a strength saving throw. You have advantage because you are being held by Typhon. All right. Um, go ahead and place yourself either there or here. You could also go into the entangling roots if you want. You can go on either side of type in, basically, if you want. That's fine. All right, so then I need someone to roll me a d6. Not me. All right, so it will not recharge. It's cool, cool, fun, fun. I'll just go ahead with a single slam attack on... I'm not compelled to fight you anymore, so I'll go against uh, the there wires. No, you, oh, you failed it. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Oh, wait, no, no you didn't. didn't. You didn't. Fuck you. Fine. Then you, then asshole. All right. I missed. Um, all right. Uh, save against slow. Fuck my life. Don't worry. Only six more rounds. It's only a minute. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's your fire damage. Um, and then, now I don't have to worry about that regen. I can blast what semblance of a mind you have with the dissonant whispers. And my damage still is rolling like shit. Is Hex still up? No, because it, Hex faded because I have to concentrate on slow. Got it. So 10's still going to fail, though. But you can't be frightened, right? So it doesn't matter. I cannot be frightened. So it'll just be the damage, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. So you just take 11 psychic. Okay. Spooky, scary skeletons. It's totally freaked out. Type. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to keep attacking it. I got a cool potion that would probably just ruin this thing's day, but I'm not going to do that. So, um, I'm still slowed, so those 16s will be hitting. Um, so 14, okay, that'll bloody it. I need everybody within 30 feet that can see it to make a dexterity saving throw. Rip. Kron, Kron yeah. gets plus three. Sure. And for some reason, it's not clicking. So I'm just going to roll the damage. If you got less than a 17, yeah. you're taking full. If you got... Um, yeah. Hold on a second here. Damn, somehow Crun pulled off a backflip. Yeah. First one of my life, I'm ecstatic. All right, so if oh. you fail to take nine, if you succeed, you take five. And basically what happens is when you hit it hard enough, like pieces of its brittleness just kind of spark out from it um, in 30 feet, kind of raining showers of rocks, spiky rocks um, throughout the room. Um, yep. Kevin, are you actually yes. down or are you just bloody? I'm down. You see uh, Fenmar, the wilden, take a shot straight to the cranium um, and kind of falls and hits the ground. Um, SOG has potion. What kind of question is that? Type it. It's still your, one. Get him on his feet. It's still your turn. That was reactionary. Do you have any bonus actions that you want to take during your turn? Um. Uh, oh yeah, drink a potion. Fuck yeah. You don't have, feel, you don't have feeling word. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm a paladin. 
You may have healing word as an option. All right, no, they cool. don't. Yeah, they do. Drink a potion. It's not on their spell list. If it was, I would have taken it a long time ago. All right. Um. Okay. Denmar, death saving throw. We usually have like 18 clerics in the party. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one of the clerics is always blowing his spells on explosions. Hey, Kevin. Welcome back to D&D, bro. Yeah, dude. It's a long time. I never left. <laughs> All right, so that's one fail. Um, next up is Kron. Uh, if I run back to Finmore, I'm gonna. No, nope, you're fine. You can leave. You can move away from it. It's it's fine. I can't take reactions. But um, yeah, you passed your last string saving throw. Yeah, you can walk away from it. No problem. Uh, I'm gonna go back to this hippie unicorn lad. Uh, Typhon is definitely looking bloodied, but he also doesn't look like he cares that much. Classic Typhon fights the last breath. Yeah, I think in the entirety of his career, he's only been unconscious twice. A little bit more than that, but yeah. Um, um I'll fuck man. I'll lay on hands them for like five points. Okay. Five hit points back on Fenmar. Anything else from Crown? No. Uh give me another D six roll, please. Uh, oh god. Yeah, yeah, you you can walk you, right back. You just say like a little lay on hands pivot and then back to the fray. You're like, hold on a second. Okay, let's do this. Um, but D6 roll from whoever. <laughs> okay. So smash on Typhon. Miss. Um, wisdom saving throw. Fuck my life. What's the DC? Uh, 15 because of my Rod of the Pack Keeper. Go fuck yourself because of Rod of the Pack. Go fuck yourself. Fuck you. Go. You're still being slow. Like you yeah. said, past What, two more rounds? Three more rounds. Like five more rounds. <laughs> I thought you said it was coming up soon. Damn it. <laughs> Got all hopeful. All right, Ezlo. All right. Um, you should just whip him with the tentacles, man. Isn't he like res out, uh, resistant to like bludgeoning? Useful. Come on, dude. You met a game to in there somewhere. When's he just gonna like turn into the whole room? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, just, just it's like a big mouth. The whole time you weren't even paying attention. Those weren't bones. Those were teeth, and it just yeah. closes the mouth. So yeah. here's your ten necrotic and four fire. Shit. It hates it. All right. Um. Oh. Oh, actually, yeah. Mm, okay. Hold on. Let me double check something here. It doesn't have any resistances. Okay. Just immunities. Um. Okay. Aslo done. Yes, sir. I cannot regain hit points or. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. the smallest amount of fire damage, but like it's enough to count. Oh, he didn't even need the fire damage. The uh, chill touch portion of it makes it so his regeneration stops. Oh, nice. Yeah. I just, yeah. There's no point using Eldritch Blast, so I'm just going for the Necrotic. Typhon. Oh, uh, what am I going to do? Hmm. And uh, then maybe... Uh... Hit and hit. And potion. All right. Fenmar. Bloody. I'm just going to heal myself, dude. My life spell slot. It's a good choice. If I can fucking find it. There, here we go. 
Oof. Man, I love Hello Dubuque. Love, love, love the heels. All right. Crun. Smash. Um, can I, like, try to attack it in a specific spot? Um, yeah, I mean, that's fine. You're trying to hit it in, like, the mouth air, eye area. But again, like I said, those are kind of more stone than they look like. But go ahead and make your attack. Yeah, I want to, like, go for the fucking, like, the quartzy looking tongue. Sure, sure. Go ahead and make your attack roll. See how it goes. Okay. Yeah, you hit it. Um, you smash off a bit of its tongue and cut into its mouth a bit. Um, does a decent amount of damage. That is just like an absolutely brutal visual. No. Um, it's a brutal visual for sure. Um, but it looks like hitting it in any point on its body, you're getting the same effect. It starts off as like, it feels like you're biting in the flesh and then it seems to kind of solidify around it. And then if your weapon is magical, it seems to break a part of the stone. Um, yeah, it's more like video game instincts. I just tried to like different colored parts of his body. Maybe, maybe he would and keep, like losing his keep those tongue. keep those instincts for sure um this creature is just kind of an amorphous mess though um so yeah as you kind of break off its mouth basically um it kind of swells shut and kind of forms out into like an eye instead yeah <laughs> let us know when it flashes red um it definitely looks worse for wear um Kron, um, go ahead and um, you two make uh, strength saving throws. I forgot to make you do it last turn, but it's not really terribly important. You guys are just staying put. You're staying put, and type and you're not. Okay. And then somebody roll me a d6. Dude, Kron, you totally should have cast Bless on us. Boost our saving throws even more. Good, good, good combo. But uh, someone roll a d6, please. I did it last time. All right, I'll do it. I like when he does oh. it. I, I'm compelled to eat fucking Typhon, so deck saving throw. God damn it. <laughs> uh, Welcome to uh, my belly. Fuck. Take your 12 points of damage. All right, so I'm at 17. And yeah, feel compelled. All right. Um, the Eslo. power of Titan compels you. Um, Eslo. Chill touching my naughty parts. Oh, so you're, yeah, yeah. Always. Uh, that'll hit. Yeah. And a little little smidgen of fire fire damage on top. Yeah, double the double the no healing for me. All right, Typhon, go ahead and make a strength saving throw. Uh, okay, uh, so you, yeah. you, you take half the damage instead of actually uh, that thirteen is a seventeen. No, this doesn't have disadvantage. This is just for the damage at the beginning of the turn. Oh, so you take five instead of. Nine. And then as your action, you can ready an action to try and be pulled out, or you can just as your action try to pull yourself out. Uh, can I, I'm just I'm gonna use my action, try to get out. Okay, so you have disadvantage. Go ahead and make a strength saving throw. Alright, so welcome to Fuck. staying inside of me. I got it. Alright, Fenmar. Uh looks like they're having um pretty good time of it. Do you have any spells you want to try and throw at it? You've got it already fairy fired. Um just try and poison it, dude. Doesn't that really work? Poison doesn't work, no. Uh, just, you don't have any... With a spear, but I'll probably die. Yeah, you could... Well, your spear's not magical. Um, you could try casting Thunder Wave if you have any more first-level spells, but I don't know if you do. Yeah, okay. I'm screwed. I would kind of hold back, then, and just kind of... Um, I would say... No words of encouragement. Say, I would say... That unicorn down. <laughs> Stand stand next to Ezlo and help him with his range attack. It's all, it's all dark. Just massage my shoulders. <laughs> massage your shoulders. Say, all right, steady your aim. Both uh, eyes open. Hashtag believe in yourself. But I, really, I don't really believe in him. 
because I think he's full of shit. Well, at this point, you could totally just skewer him on your spear like he's evil, I mean, right? I, it just represents itself, but this thing needs to die first. I All right. I'll just do your thing. Crud. Um, are you going to action help him? Oh, if you action help him, he won't get the benefit until his next turn. Um, he's not. It doesn't seem he's reaching out to try and get assistance, though. Uh, that means if you use your action to help Typhon, Typhon will have to wait until his turn to take his action to pull himself out. Or you can attack it right now. If I attack it, will it hurt him? No, it's made out of stone. It's kind of this weird bulbous oh, mass. Really oh, okay. Yeah. Although, you know what? In the future, if I run this thing again, that's totally going to be the case. Uh, it's kind of brilliant. Um, but no, it, it's not something I've been doing. So yeah, you miss trying to avoid swinging at him, th overthinking it. You swing wide and don't really cut into it at all. All right, on its turn, it's compelled to uh, attack, but um, I, I believe, let's see here. Disadvantage. It repeats the saving throw. Only after yeah, I've been doing it weird. So its action is going to be it does nothing because I know how I need to reword this in hindsight. I built this thing in about a half an hour. Um, oh, well, I appreciate it. At work, um, because you guys, we had no idea where you were going. So I just quick wrote like the things that I didn't have filled yet, this one being one of them. Um, but yeah, it's not going to take its action because what it should be doing on its action should be making you make the saving throw and dealing the damage then instead of at the beginning of your turn. That way you're not making mm. two saving throws on your turn. Ah. Wording is off. Ezlo. Oh, wait, Wisdom, fuck you. <laughs> three. Sorry, I think it's only like three more rounds. <laughs> Actually, um, I will get the benefit of a turn, though. Somebody roll a d6. Not me. Okay. Just hit the button. There you go. Oh, fuck you. I'm not slow anymore. Oh, no. That's slow. Advantage. No, he doesn't have disadvantage on that anymore. Hex is gone. Oh, wait. Was that what... Uh, wait, why is Hex gone? Oh, because oh, I had to concentrate on slow. Gotcha. So um, what, what you doing? What you doing, Eslo? Oh, you um, 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 shit. He's not slow. Just shoot him. Uh, here's another uh, something that make you not attack me. What? Just Back. shoot it. Just shoot it. Fine. I like. You want another wall of text? No, just shoot it. All right. Give it fire it. damage. All right. You kill it. Everybody in the room, make a dexterity yeah, saving throw. And if you are inside of it, um, make that dexterity. So you don't you don't make a dexterity saving throw. You just take the damage. For the people inside of it, you take this much damage. What? For the people that are outside of it, you take this much damage. Okay. Well, here's what happened. Okay. Um, wait. Do I make a dex saving throw? No, you make no saving throw because you're inside of it. You can't escape. It's a, you take 5d6 well, straight. And then if you're outside of it, dexterity saving throw, dc 17. Uh, success, um, take half of 11. So 6. Failure, take 11. Okay, so here's what happens. Uh, Typhon is unconscious. And then this happens. Uh, <laughs> knocked unconscious from an attack. It's not an attack, is it? Um... See, that thing was made up by him, so I'm going to have to, by uh, Jason, so I'm going to have to rework the wording. 10 day shouldn't be a thing. Um, yeah, I tried, to, I tried to clean up the language a little bit myself. Yeah, I will say that. Um, sure. Um, so it just looks metal as fuck. He like explodes out of it. So go ahead and roll 2d6. And uh, Kron gets lit on fire some more. So um, did you already take the 11 from the, the bursty burst, Andy? Yeah. So he takes seven more as fire bursts out from it. And Kron kind of appears there before it. Yeah, so it's like it dies, Typhon it deals damage for whatever reason. 
Yeah, and you're stabilized. Flame explodes around him, and then he just collapses to his his knees and passes out. Yep. Okay. I need to work on the wording on that uh, personally because once per ten day, and then once per it's it's two abilities. I think it would make sense if it were just the one. I, get, I guess I get what it's doing. It's two, it's two separate abilities. Once you can stabilize yourself automatically, and then once you can burst. Okay. All right, cool, 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 cool. Let's go ahead and get to the fun part. So... I'm unconscious, but the good news is I'm not dying. Is the... Uh, whatchamacallit, is it's like whatever semblance of this corpse is it like liquid is it solid or is it just gone? Uh, there's just bits of stone everywhere um when it breaks though um as though you see something that everybody doesn't see you see kind of a spectral essence um like a spirit a shade if you will kind of float straight towards you and kind of slam into where you are keeping the orb yeah i pull out the orb and i look at it and i just flip off the orb yeah um as you're kind of looking at it and you kind of feel like it enter into it um you kind of feel whatever the curse is like that weird malignancy that strange kind of just illness it seems to be kind of not as strong i guess that's the best way to say it Can I my hit point back you don't get your hit point back but um you mitigate one specific effect of it so how let me give you the system for it. Uh, every month you lose a hit point, but every concurrent month it's cumulative normally. So on your first month, it's one. On your next month, it's two. Not two total, two new ones. So a total of three. On your third month, it would have been three more, which would have been six, and down and down and down. With this blessing, the spirit of Gavilus in your orb, it's just one every month. Just. Oh, nice. Yep. I mean, it definitely keeps you alive a lot longer, however many hit points times months. I'm trying to make bargains with these like extra planar entities, and they're all just like, rah, 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 you're just a mortal. I'll just kill you and take oh, you. Oh, and then just it. Apologies. One other thing I forgot to mention. When it bursts, um, something else happens. Um, you hear clatter clanging. Um, you can see what appears to be like stones and gems and metal kind of hitting the ground. And some of the metal seems to have form, and some of the metal doesn't. Um, and uh, the gems seem to be kind of brightly colored uh pinks purples reds and what have you um the list this, of the item is that you it's a borderlands boss or a diablo boss whatever any purple beans it, or uh, orange uh no 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 um you see the following um do you want me to just type it out for you I mean, if you got it written down somewhere, just copy paste it. I wish I did. I didn't write it down. I just, I just looked at the chart and chose the one. Anyways, here, hold on. Damn. So at the end of that fight, I had like twenty HP, and I'm down to three because of all the Allahu Akbar and that happened afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I healed the full, and now I'm back down to like death's door, dude. <laughs> yeah, welcome to a party with uh, Typhon Damascus. You don't know if he's gonna kill you more or kill the bad guy more. Hey, I'm not possessed this time. Yeah, Box exploded, fucking fiery death. Stigma. When have I ever? I'm when have like, I ever? Holy shit! You're talking about I'm talking about Sir Gregory. Fuck you. <laughs> Dude, I've 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 literally Ezel has watched your character. Do some really, like he did. Like I'm a weird dude, and I think you're a weird dude. That's how the weird shit I've seen you do. Like what? Well, the first time we met, you were like, "Hello, I'm a paladin of Averu. We are all about self sacrifice, you know, just like our Lord and Master." And like, yeah, this guy, he's a guy you can rely on. Oh my God, what's that? It's a giant bug thing all right but we, there's like seven of us let's band together and defeat it all right where's the paladin he's fucking 10 <laughs> miles back to town yeah i was like we need to leave we need to leave right now 
fucking hot hands save the day. So, pshing, a bunch of shit appears in the ground. Um, oh, an Holy ingot shit. of cold iron. A spear. like, whoop, I'm out of hammers. Oh, the important question. Is the spear or the throwing hammer magical? They glow blue in this room. So, yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah, they do glow blue in the room. The cold iron has a faint glue to it. The stones don't have any glow to them, but the uh, the ingot of cold iron has a faint glow. The spear glows, the throwing hammer glows, the amulet glows, and then there's still two pieces uh, or three pieces on the dais up um, uh, where the uh, guy came from that are glowing. Could someone possibly heal me? No, 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 dude. We got magic items. Yeah, you're you're breathing. Well, you're safe. Let's let's deal this splitting the loot while he's unconscious. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I wake up on a rock in the middle of space, and I'm like, guys, guys. An alien uh, lightning hammer. I guess I'll heal his fucking autismo ass with five. Um, Play on hands. No, no, no. Let's put the coin first and figure out the other treasure before you get the. You dumb dumb. We can't cast. <laughs> we can't cast. Uh, he doesn't know it's there. Then you can just tell him, hey, um, there wasn't any treasure. Uh, let's go. <laughs> We're just all glowing really, really bright blue for some reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I swear to goodness, that druid didn't have anything on him when we came so in. Did you guys, so, did you guys find anything? We just walk around with like jingling coin purses, like, nope. It's like the droid goes in there looking like a hobo. He comes back out. He's got like Gucci fucking Ray Bans. It's like a Dark Souls <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah. It's like a first level WoW character versus like an 80th level or whatever the highest level is now. Yeah. 110. God damn. It tells you how long it's been since I've ever even cared. Um, do you guys check the stuff in the um, sarcophagus over there? Oh, for sure. Okay. So. On the side slats, there are two um, clay pots. Um, you're kind of familiar with this because you've seen this kind of embalming before. The Vazriel kind of embalm parts of the people into them. There are two um, of these Copic jars present, um, one on each of those small little rests. And then if you look inside of the um, sarcophagus, there is a box sitting about where the head would be um, and the box from the top um, looks like this. Um, is it similar at all to the box that the orb was in, the first orb? <laughs> Not at all. The box oh, that the yeah. orb was in was solid black. This appears to have patterning. Yeah. Does it seem to have a, like a latch or anything, or is it just like a cube, like a straight cube? Okay, so you pick it up. Um, just imagine that that is a three-dimensional image that kind of exists. You're looking at it from the top down. So on the left side, right side, and closest side, which would be the side at the bottom, there doesn't appear to be anything to it. When you flip it over and look at the opposite side, the same is true. Completely just kind of sealed, nothing to it. On the north end, or the end away from you, if you were to pick it up, there appear to be two kind of extensions or levers or switches and you can push those down into it um, when you do so nothing happens but the thing that you notice most about it is you kind of see that there's like this circular pattern with kind of a extensions crosses kind of coming out from it it appears that there's a piece missing this circle is missing there might be a key or something that you do not have All right, so we got a lockbox. We'll tuck that in, tuck that away for later. In the anything of interest in the urns, or just like embalmed hands. So when you look inside of uh, one, you can see that inside there is a heart with kind of a blackish, brackish liquid kind of floating. It's floating in that, and then the other one there appear to be um, there appears to be a brain um, in kind of a 
nasty kind of bluish liquid. There are markings on each um, in Vazriel. Uh, you can read them. The uh, heart says, um, my heart has always given me the strength to continue forward. On the, um, the brain jar, it says, uh, my knowledge has always been able to keep me um, uh, keep my thirst parch or keep my thirst, um, keep me from being thirsty. My brain. All right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the heart out of the thing. And I'm going to offer it to Kron and be like, all right, you, you know, you, you didn't have the first spoils of war. Would you, would you care? Care for you wanna, what? You, you want to eat me a you heart. Wanna, you want to eat it? I'm going to explain, I explained to you that, uh, a lot of times, um, these things can be imbued with uh, magical properties, and if consumed, they can be put onto you. I, I will recite the time I ate the heart of a yuan tea and then thus gained the ability to speak and write their language. Oh, cool. And if not, I look like a crazy silver-haired, blue-eyed bitch who rides dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a win-win, dude. <laughs> So wait, are you, are you like bullshitting him, or is this like? Do you honestly think this this might be the case? No, uh, I'm, I'm being honest. As he replies in Yuan T. Parcel tongue. Parcel tongue. Yeah, yeah I'll uh, you that. Do you want to eat it? Uh. Sure. Yeah. Let's force feed it to the path of the tiefling and see what happens. Okay. So, um, Kren, you're not quite as psychopathic or sick as an Ezlo, so I'm going to need you to make me a just a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> oh, God. Am I going to die? Because you've been told that you, you know, you should eat it, you, you'll have advantage. Um, but yeah, you start eating into it, and it's gross. And it makes you feel kind of weird. Um, and uh, you, you manage to force yourself through it. It takes you about a minute, two minutes to kind of just eat the whole thing. And once you do so, raise your maximum hit points and your current hit points by five. Hey, we out here. And then yeah. I want to do the same thing with the brain, but I'll offer it to the druid. All right. Denmar, um, you're a little bit more uh, intimate with the nature of... Um, eating others to gain powers. It's old magic. I guess I'd do it, but I couldn't trust this guy. Okay. All right. You eat the brain. Um, when you do so, um, after doing so, you gain a single first level spell slot. Damn. In addition to your normal allotment of spell slots. And <laughs> just laughing in different <laughs> Over here, I think it all sounds the same. Just why do you laugh in snake speak? It's hissier <laughs> when he laughs. You want to? It's like more metal when he laughs in deep speech. Um, but fair enough. Um, so you gain one additional spell slot. Um, just go ahead and in your notes or uh, as an ability, just put uh, boon of uh, Gavilus's brain, and you just have an additional spell slot per day, first level. Um. But yeah, after some inspection, you'll realize that the spear is a plus one spear. It's also um, made out of cold iron. The throwing hammer is a plus one throwing hammer that returns to its uh, wielder once thrown. Uh, it is also made out of cold iron. And the amulet um, that you find um, is also crafted out of cold iron. Um, and my brain does not recall what I wrote that was supposed to be. So I'm going to go through my shit here. Hold on a sec. Feel free to take whatever treasures you desire from this horde. And I, Ezel gazes at the black orb. I got what I came for. I tuck it back away. Druids can't use throwing hammers, can they? I don't believe they can. I think it's a simple weapon, though, actually. So maybe. That's the thing. I, I don't see, like, there's a light hammer. That's what I mean. Is cold iron just like cobalt? Like, it's like a deep 
blue or iron. <laughs> Correct. And to be more specific, and this might be something that kind of stirs you um, towards it, uh, Feyman, is in the Feywild, nothing is more deadly than cold iron. It's strong against fey creatures, and it's strong against uh, demons. So you're saying I would want that? I mean, it's strong against creatures that you... Basically, if you were a human and you picked up a weapon that's effective against humans, you're not going to be like, oh, I don't like that because it's made out of that. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to kill some people. <laughs> if, you find, if you find a gun, are you like, oh... I can't this, use that. This, I could kill myself. This, <laughs> this could potentially hurt me. Put your eye out, kid. I, I mean, being realistic, I want the hammer, but that's me, not the tree guy. You want the spear as well? Like, I don't, I don't think anybody is. I really don't think anybody's fighting you for the hammer or the spear. Does anybody want those? I'm pretty sure the amulet's the only thing that anybody cares about. What did you say it was? Please. Yeah, I haven't figured that out of installing. Shut up. I shouldn't have brought attention to it. Uh, yeah, cold iron could be, uh, it's made out of cold iron. iron. Um, what did I have it written down as? I don't foresee an immediate use for the fucking cold iron, personally. Yeah, the ingot, we know someone who would Really like that ingot. Thunder. Yeah, we'll take it back to him. And maybe have it forged into some sort of battle axe. I'm sure Krun would like a axe that's good at slaying fucking demons. Uh, yes. Yes, I would, actually. Or perhaps vampires? I've known you for merely five minutes, and you already know what I fucks with. Dude, I've, I convinced you to eat a son, I convinced the son of a Veiru to eat a fucking heart of, like, some ancient rock demon. Why do you think I was laughing so hard? My character loves when he rubs off on people. The uh, amulet is an amulet of health. Oh, shit. I was... Oh. Which, for those... Uh, the uninitiated, the your constitution score is set to 19 when you wear an amulet of health. Does it require attunement? It does require attunement. Fuck. Constitution of 19? I just hear that right? Yeah, yeah. so it, it augments Dang. your current con to 19. You got, a, you, got, you got a light hammer and a spear. I think it's up between Krun and um, Neslo. Or not Krun and Neslo, Krun and... Um, I don't think anybody's going to fight you for them. Nobody wants them, right? I fucking clear mine. So, <laughs> you guys gave those both up right now. Plus one. So, I mean, unless the, unless the hammer like fucking screams out metal songs when you throw it, and it's in like it just comes, transition. It just comes back to you. Oh, man, fuck these javelins! <laughs> <laughs> fucking okay. figures out what the hammer is, and he just throws the spears away. He's like, I don't need that shit. He's holding the hammer in his hands, and then just all these fucking baby. (laughs) So, just a heads up for the for the two of you paladins who are thinking about that amulet. Um, At current, your both your constitution scores are fourteen, so you both gain the same benefit constitution wise um, as to. how many hit points it'll give you. The Paladin um, Typhon is at 6th level and has a number of magic items. Uh, Krun is 4th level and has 2 magic items. I mean... If, if I were to use the amulet, I'd have to get rid of 1. So then Krun would probably be the better choice for the amulet. Are you okay with that, Chad? Um, you, could, you could basically take your fill of the coin. I don't think anybody would argue. Yeah, I mean, really, the only benefit to that amulet would be it would get me closer to that. Yeah, but again, I mean, just level more. You'll be fine there, too. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and set your um, ability score to be 19. There, um, Andy. What level? Oh, Crunsforth. Oh, 
Speaking Phil, of stuff, probably got, you probably got a shitload of hit points now. Yeah, he kind of came in legacy, so he played in the Sun of the Citadel game a while ago. Um, he would gain two times four is eight, so eight hit points retroactively. Yeah. What's your hit point total now? It should be. Hold on a second. Let me do some math. Six times three. Oh wait, sorry. Experience up, guys. Um, Nine hundred and fifty. Uh, everybody. So I'm in level three. I believe you're level three. Yeah. Say nine fifty. Nine hundred fifty. Yeah. Holy fuck. That thing Fabulous. was. Thank you. The thing was a challenge rating seven plus the effects from before. So yeah. Um. Out of character note, though, there isn't much more to this chamber. Um, you do understand that there is a lot more to the waypoint, though. And it definitely has a lot of potential. There's a lot of things that could be used with it. Um, but when you exit out of this chamber, the door behind you seals shut and becomes stone. Um, and this is no longer a portion of the, um, the place. You cannot come back to this location. You can come back to the waypoint. You can't come back to Gavos's tomb. So is Typhon still inside, unconscious? Yeah, they leave you there and they just go. Um, Later, dude. The sword, uh, the, the, the ingot is enough to make a long sword. Yeah, I suppose. That'd be fine. What about like, the head of an axe? Or like the beard of an axe? Uh, for sure. Definitely able to do that. The sword would be kind of a thinner blade. Um, but yeah. Uh, let me just fix some things here on Andy's character sheet because I'm just now doing it for the for the first time. Um, so, throwing hammer. Is this a throwing hammer plus one? What dice is it? It uses dex. It's a light hammer plus one. Okay, light hammer. Yeah, you can use dex or strength. And you're fucking my math up. So six times three is 18. 18 plus 10 is 28. 28 plus 12 is, yeah, so 41. Oh, plus five. So 46. Kron has 46 hit points. He's only six hit points below me. He's a I got ten hit points from eating the heart and the same. Five, five, and then you gained uh, eight from the amulet. Wait, I gained eight from the amulet. Yeah. What were you at to start? I had thirty-three to start. So let's do some math together. So at first level, you gained ten for your hit dice, and then you gain 6, 6, and 6. So 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 10 is 28. That's from the hit dice alone. Okay? Set that aside. Then 4 times 4... Oh, that's where my math fucked up. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 plus 28 is 44. Plus 5 is 49. You have 49 hit points. Yep, 49. Okay. He's slow. Um, but yeah, you're three hit points behind a character of your same class that is two levels higher than you. Your AC I mean, is still... I did walk the Heightfield Citadel. I am a legend. For sure. But, um... Uh, oh, what was I going to say? You are still three AC points behind Typhon, though. So, And you don't have a cool fire sword. Alright. Um, any I'm a little, like, side jelly of his cool sword. It's fucking, Have you seen it? It's fucking barrack point at the Night King, this cunt sword. But did, did you see his sword, though? It's a, It's got a candelabra for a sword guard. It's called Lumiere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. It's in the magic item. Yeah. It's a it's a creation of mine. It was from a little event I ran. Yeah, this is a uh, fucking the, that that kid's fault. I'm a fan of it. Like, actually, yeah, two of my magic items are custom made by in the different DMs. Did it show Could up be. on your thing? Yeah. Yeah. 
you can cast light with it, but it has to be on the sword guard. And then um, once you can use the, um, you can convert all your damage with the weapon to fire, which he did on um, Gavilus. My jump attack. What's the name of that ring, by the way? The Ring of Fire and Faith. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take a gander at that. It's on your character sheet, right? So yeah. I'll take a gander. I'll take a gander at that and I'll fucks with it to make it a little bit more co co it, it seems, seems fine. Yeah, it's a fun little one. Yeah. What were you saying, Andy? Literally the clerk's candlestick. I'm on to you, cooks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. I'm not the one. That's all fucking Steve. You saw that Dark Souls reference. I'm sitting there, I'm like, dog, this looks hella. Familiar. I'm like, 